This is Twit. The NIST is testing methods of recovering data from smashed smartphones. Uh, and, you know, it makes sense when you think about it. There's been a lot of discussion through the years about how to best irreversibly kill a hard drive. Uh, and we talked recently, not too long ago, about this. One of my favorites, since um, many modern hard drive platters are now being made of glass, you can often take a hard drive, kind of like, um, what was it we used to smash? Bit of honey? But no, no, not, not bit oh, of honey. A it was like silver those, hammer. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. You, you, you can take a. Yeah, it was bit of uh, honey. A, uh, it was there, there was there was a that big white thing that was chewy. Laffy uh, taffy. I remember. Yeah, you we, you you used Turkish to smash it. Bonomo. It was Bonomo. Uh, oh well. And it, yeah, you smash it and it'd be little pieces and yeah, you need it. And it, and and then, and then you peel the paper off. Yeah. And it's like all got little. It was itty good. Bitty, you know, loved that. Chew, yeah. Anyway, it turns <laughs> out you can do that with a, with many hard drives. You take a hard drive, just smash it face down onto the concrete or asphalt or something, a hard surface. And then if you shake it, bring, put it up next to your ear and shake it. If you hear the sound of lots of little bitty fragments, then you know. But how do you, you know you got all the platters? Yeah, that's true. Chances we, are. I know this is true because 20 years ago, Patrick Norton, we were showing people how to destroy hard drives, and he opened up a hard drive. Because usually it's pretty easy to unscrew a hard drive. You just need a Torx, a Torx wrench. Yeah. yeah. Pull out the things. There's th three, four, five platters in the case of the 16 terabytes. I don't know, 28 platters. And then he said, and watch, I could just, and he hit it with a hammer. He didn't know it was glass. He thought it was going to be metal. He was going to bend <laughs> it. And shards of glass flew everywhere we weren't wearing protective eyewear this is live television we're very lucky <laughs> <laughs> talk about face scraping i mean i wow that was I, anyway yes so this is nothing new they've been made out of glass in some cases anyway for a while yeah yeah uh it just turns out it, it's uh, glass is a fluid and it is an easier substance to work with to get the huh. the level of smoothness that oh, you yeah, need course, in yeah. order to fly heads as close to these things uh, as they are. But what about an entirely solid state smartphone? Uh, we talked about it just a couple weeks ago. One of those guys had shot one of his two smartphones and the FBI claimed to have brought it back to life, yeah. which I think is a miracle. By the way, you got any bit uh, honey? Because I got a hammer. <laughs> Uh, hmm. uh, the bad guys, it turns out this is a thing. Bad guys are now smashing their phones, uh, drowning them in water, shooting them with a gun. What do they know. do? Doesn't he throw it in the microwave on Mr. Robot? Oh, those are the little SIM cards he'd throw in the microwave. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to do that. I mean, but that, that would be rough. You used, used to be able to put a, um, a, a, a CD, an audio CD yeah, in the spark. microwave. And it would yeah. make all kind of sparkliness yeah. and things, yeah. Don't do that um, at home, kids. It's not so a the good question idea. is, so the question is, how effective is physically destroying a smartphone? It turns out that many criminals have discovered to their chagrin that reducing their devices to smashed plastic and glass means nothing if the device's little black epoxy memory chips have managed to survive. Forensic engineers who work with police to gather evidence have become quite adept at performing like amazing feats <coughs> of posthumous data extraction. With more and more evidence now sitting on smartphones, a better understanding of what works and what doesn't has been grow has been a turned into a growing issue of some urgency. So our U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, recently conducted a series of tests using 10 popular Android smartphones, which had accumulated a mix of data during their simulated use. The NIST engineers and their forensic partners then attempted to extract the data from the surviving memory chips using various methods to compare with the original data set. In some cases, the chips could be left attached to the original motherboard and accessed via the JTAG serial interface, which all systems have. JTAG 
uh, is an industry standard serial communications protocol for testing and programming electronics. Um, in other cases, the chips were physically removed from their original motherboards and then interconnected to directory uh, directly, uh, sort of an in vitro data extraction. Uh, so the NIST wrote in their report, the, compa the comparison showed that both JTAG and chip off extracted, uh, and that's what they call it, where they have to remove the chip from the board, were able to extract the data without altering it, but that some of the software tools were better at interpreting the data than others, especially for data from so-called uh, or from from social media apps. Uh, and, and as I was reading this and thinking about it, I thought, yeah, that's a good point. It's one thing to have access to the raw, presumably unencrypted. I think that's why they chose Android phones uh, data. But you still need to be able to make heads or tails of what you have. I mean, it's, it's a chip, you know. So it's like, okay, here's the contents of this this grid of bits. Now you got to make sense of it. Um, either way, it's a big ask to like to to tell some guy, okay, here's a destroyed phone. Uh, <laughs> we need to know what data is in here. Um, it turns out that there are trained forensics people whose days are spent doing this. Um, uh, they have an expert at NIST, Rick Ayers, who said many labs have an overwhelming workload and some of these tools are very expensive. To be able to look at a report and say this tool will work better than another for a particular case can be a big advantage. So essentially, they're, they're, they're sort of trying to create some decision framework for forensic data recovery. What really peaked up, uh, uh, or I guess peaked my interest, was that Celebrite, the, the company and the technology that we've spoken of often here, was one of the two systems that was used. Um, I've got a link to a PDF in the show notes to uh, the, it, it, the, the PDF is titled test results for binary image JTAG and chip off decoding and analysis tool Celebrite universal forensic extraction device UFED. And that's an acronym that we've seen before and talked about. So they call it the the Celebrite Universal Forensic Extraction Device Physical Analyzer, and it's now at version 7.20.0.123. Um, and it is interesting to scroll through this. Um, uh, the, uh, they're lo located in Persephone, New Jersey, uh, at 7 Campus Drive. We know that from the report. And the results summary said... Celebrite's physical analyzer is a versatile mobile forensic solution that runs on physical hardware. I'm sorry, that runs on existing hardware. It comes with a suite of applications, peripherals, and accessories. Physical analyzer was tested for its ability to decode and analyze binary images created by performing chip off and JTAG data extractions from supported mobile devices. Except for the following anomalies, the tool was able to decode and report all supported data objects completely and accurately for all mobile devices tested. And so what we have is a list of a few exceptions for there were some standalone files for an HTC One Mini in the chip off that I guess that it had a problem with. There were some social media related data uh, that um, a, 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 an LG K7 chip off extraction had a problem with, the ZTE 970 chip off had a problem with, and that related to some Twitter data that they could not recover. Uh, the HTC One XL, where the chip had been removed, the HTC Desire S, with its chip had been removed, uh, and then two HTC 
phones where JTAG, the JTAG serial interface was used, had some problem uh, reconstructing some Facebook data. But by and large, we're talking about uh, 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 contact. Uh, oh, oh, it says in, in, in the report here, they were able to, to recover and perfectly reconstruct deleted contacts, calendar, memo note entries recovered from the HTC Desire 626, ZTE 970, the Moto E, the Samsung S2, the HTC One XL, and the Samsung S4. They were able to pull deleted contacts and calendar entries from the LG K7 and HTC Desire S. Deleted contacts and memo entries were recovered from the HTC One Mini. Uh, deleted call logs were recovered from the LG K7, the Moto E, Samsung S2, Samsung S4, and HTC Desire S. They were able to pull deleted SMS entries recovered from the HTC Desire 626 and a bunch of others, and bookmark entries recovered from the HTC Desire 626 and others. So I, I thought this would be interesting to our listeners because, I mean, this demonstrates um, that you that you can't you know crack your phone in half or apparently even shoot it with a bullet. Uh, you need to you know if you were someone for I mean even for benign purposes you know these are reconstructed deleted data from the memory is being is being completely recovered by this Celebrite forensic analysis tool. So this stuff is real. And essentially what it means is you need to take your phone apart and drill a, and get your drill and drill a hole through all of the little black uh, chips that you see on your phone uh, if you really and truly want to keep solid state memory from being recoverable. Um, you know, these were not forensically wiped. Uh, if you were able to do a really good forensic overwrite of the data, then that would have rendered them unrecoverable. But failing that, uh, you know, you really need to reduce this thing to, to re re reduce solid state storage to a state where it is where the individual components of it are clearly destroyed. Otherwise, if, if anybody had sufficiently, uh, you know, sufficient motivation to reconstruct the data, uh, apparently this is something that is now just, I mean, there are people who spend their days doing this and the NIST has, Oh, the, the, one, the other issue that I didn't bring up that was, it was mentioned was the issue of the chain of evidence. So in order for a, uh, you know, a, a defense attorney not to be able to poke holes in this, it's necessary for this, for this to be done in, uh, in conditions that are, where the the chain of evidence is not broken, uh, so you know labs need to be certified and the 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 phones need to be handled appropriately and so forth. But the point is, it is really and truly a thing to be able to recover data from a phone, even if it really looks very sad. <laughs> it may still have some vital components that are intact, and that's all it takes. Which wow, you know, it's just like it really does happen. <laughs>